The last type of story problem that we're going to look at is a uniform motion problem. And with our uniform motion problem, remember that all uniform motion problems use the following equation. Distance equals rate times time. It's just a matter of how they use it that matters. And so we're going to look at a specific type of problem. And this will work any time you have some man-made object working against nature, whether that's a, the, working against the jet stream or with the jet stream, whether that's a river going up and down, or whether that's just a really strong headwind when you're trying to ride your bike against it, or whatever it is that we're looking at. So the problem that we're looking at then is the airspeed of a plane versus the ground speed of a plane. And so a plane, if it's flying in still air, can run its engines and is going to run at a certain speed. And the, if there's no wind at all, then the airspeed is the ground speed. But if there is a wind, then flying with the wind means we're going to speed up because the wind's now pushing us along. Or if we fly against the wind, that means that the wind's slowing us down relative to the ground. So our engines are still working just as hard. The plane's still trying to fly just as fast, but its effective speed is affected by the wind. And so suppose that we have a plane flying 1,200 miles west, and that takes four hours, but going east only takes three hours. So we have two trips. We have a westbound trip, and we have an eastbound trip. And we got a picture, 1,200 miles, and our westbound, going this way, takes four hours, but coming back, it only takes three hours. And so we know that because the distance is the same, the wind's got to be blowing this direction. And so when we make our table, when we're flying east, that means the wind's going to add. And when we're flying west, it means the wind's going to subtract. So we're going to take our rate, our time, and our distance and fill in what we know. And the pieces that we know for sure, we know that for our west it takes four hours. And for our east it takes three hours. We know that in both cases, the distance is 1,200 miles. So we can actually fill in the 1,200 for both of these. But now we need to pick our variables. So we're going to let A be the airspeed and W be the wind speed. And so in both cases, we're flying A miles per hour in just the plane itself. When we're flying west, the wind is going to subtract. When we're flying east, the wind is going to add. So we're faster flying this way than we are flying back. Okay, so we're going to use our table, and we're going to build an equation for each row. This is different than what we did before, because now we have two variables in that row. We can't really combine those very nicely. So we're going to get A minus W times 4 equals 1,200, and A plus W times 3 equals 1,200. And this is equation 1, and this is equation 2. Now, if you look carefully, we're almost set up for elimination already because we've got a minus w and a plus w. But we have this 4 and this 3 on the outside. And a lot of times we want to distribute to get rid of parentheses, but in this case, because we have an equation, we can actually take equation 1 and divide it by 4, and equation 2 and divide it by 3 to get a minus w equals 300, and a plus w equals 400. And now notice that all we have to do is add these together, and we'll get 2a, because a plus a is 2a, minus w plus w is eliminated, 300 plus 400 is 700. We divide by 2, and a is 350. So our airplane is flying at 350 miles per hour with no effect from the wind. Our wind speed, though, all we have to do is plug this in. I'm going to plug it into the second one, so we get 350 plus W equals 400, subtract 350, so W is 50. So our wind is flying at 50 miles per hour. Notice this still works the other way. 350 minus 50 is 300. 300 times 4 is 1,200 miles. 350 plus 50 is 400. 400 times 3 is 1,200 miles. So the air speed of 350 and the wind speed of 50 miles per hour adequately solve the problem.